Uh, welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. To, uh, today we are going to discuss a case of a painless loss of vision. So, shall we start? Sir? Yeah, please carry on. Yeah. A 58 year old male presented to you with complaints of a loss of vision. So, initial uh, as in the year, the first primary survey has been done, which was showing airway, breathing, circulation, disability and exposure all within normal limits. In the disability section, the left eye was having a vision uh, problem, sir. So, regarding the vision problem, uh, further evaluation, uh, which was proceeded with further evaluation. Uh, the secondary history of the patient was, patient uh, was a known case of left posterior communicating artery aneurysm. Status post uh, clipping of the aneurysm was done in 2009, sir. And uh, patient uh, was also a known case of systemic hypertension and diabetes, uh, type 2 diabetes. And uh, patient had undergone surgery for L5-S1 minimally invasive lumbar disectomy in 2016. This is the past history, sir. And regarding to the events because of which the patient came to the ER, patient had a, a sudden acute on, uh, onset painless loss of vision in the left eye since yesterday at 4 p.m. onwards. And there was no any history of double vision, no pain with eye movements or no headache, no redness, no watering of the eyes. Patient also has no any other history of dysphagia, dysarthria or any focal neurological deficits. There is no any history of uh, any sensory complaints other than the eye vision loss. No history of any bladder or bowel incontinence. And patient was able only able to perceive hand movements in left eye. Uh, so for which the patient has come to the ear, sir. Uh, right now on examination, systemic examination was within normal limits, vitals were stable and regarding the CNS examination, patient was conscious, oriented to time, place and person and obeying verbal commands. Coming to cranial nerve examination, which specific to the second cranial nerve, uh, the visual equity in the right eye was 6 by 6 and in left eye there was hand movements which was present from 1 to 1.5 meter. And uh, even RAPD was noticed in the left eye, sir. Uh, further uh, uh, examination as done by the ophthalmological department. Uh, the fundoscopy was revealing cherry red spot and there was an ischemic noted in the macular area. And uh, sclerosed vessels were noted at the optic disc margin. So, uh, further uh, this patient, uh, because of painless loss of vision, uh, this patient was further evaluated like a sudden onset painless loss of vision. There were uh, CT brain. Yeah, can you, can I interrupt now? Yes, sir. See, basically based on the history, what are the differentials that we will uh, sir, keep in uh, mind? Painless uh, unilateral vision loss we can have uh, basically coming from the starting there can be lens dislocation. Next, uh, retinal detachment, vitreous hemorrhage, CRAO, CRVO. It can be a stroke yeah. or uh, it can be ischemic optic neuropathy. These are the differential for a painless okay. unilocular loss of vision. Okay. okay. So, uh, most of the causes usually are ischemic. I think yeah. that is one of the primary thing that we should be looking at. Mm -hmm. And in a background of hypertension, I think most likely, I think if you look statistically, would be branch retinal vein occlusion. And if the macular perfusion is damaged, there can be decrease in vision. But yes. usually it is unlikely to cause extreme total loss of vision. Okay. So, branch retinal vein and artery occlusion can occur. Uh, vein occlusion is more common, especially in hypertensives. Quite often it goes unnoticed also, and if the patient is not very uh, perceptive about his or her symptoms. But uh, it can definitely occur, it can be. Then, retinal vein occlusion is again much more common, usually the result of thrombosis. Then comes uh, artery occlusion, as happened in this patient most likely, because the degree of visual loss is very significant. It is a, like almost total loss of vision, no? just limited to hand motions. So, such drastic decrease in vision can occur if one is artery occlusion. Second is detachment. Oh yeah, detachment also it can happen, but it usually like uh, again few over in a few hours only it will increase. Other thing is optic neuritis. It can be optic neuritis, it can be retrobulbar neuritis or anywhere in along the visual pathway, along the white matter, if there is a problem, there can be. So, uh, anterior ischemic optic neuropathy also is something similar. Again, usually the visual loss is not so very severe. Definitely there will be decrease in the vision, but it will not be limited to hand motions and all. Then cortical blindness also can occur, but that will be a bilateral uh, loss of vision. Okay, yeah, we'll proceed with the yes. examination, please. Sir, so, in this case, the patient on further evaluation, uh, like uh, they had uh, 
in view that the patient had an aneurysmal clipping previously done and the clip is not MRA compatible sir. Oh, oh. So we had to go ahead with CT brain uh, and a carotid angiogram to find if there is any central cause involved. Yeah. In which there was a finding was a gliosis was there in the left posterior inferior cerebellum which was sequel to the old insult and there was no any uh, new finding or no aneurysm or no any uh, infarct or any such change in the present case scenario. Next, uh, so how will you distinguish a cortical blindness from a more peripheral uh, cause of decrease in vision? So regarding uh, signs and symptoms wise, uh, like uh, we can elicit pupillary light reflex and yeah. we can make a major difference. That is true. So the first order neuron is located within the retina, it is in the ganglion cell of the retina. Right. Second order is in the lateral geniculate body and third order would be in the cortex, primary visual cortex. So. Uh, like uh, if you have a, a cause in the anterior visual pathway that is in the eye mm -hmm. or optic nerve or in the retrovalvular region there will be definitely RAPD will be present while if it's a cortical blindness there will not be any RAPD because it is beyond that mm -hmm. beyond the second order yes. other than this uh, exam in, no. in like investigation wise or uh, MRA brain uh, stroke protocol or that that, yeah, that was done yeah okay yes. So, a uh, stroke protocol, it was normal, it other was than the… It was not able to be done in this because there was yeah, a yeah, multiple okay, and we okay, used a CT, okay. CT angio. Yeah, yeah. We did a CT angio angio along with the carotid. Carotid Doppler. Doppler was done. So, uh, basically in this patient, uh, depending upon the fundoscopic examination which was showing cherry red spot and ischemic knotted macular area, like the diagnosis of CRAO has been made. To rule the causes of the CRAO, uh, whether it is a thromboembolic or uh, See any stroke related, initially angiogram was done. Next, uh, even 2D echo and uh, transesophageal echo was done. There were no any causes of any cardioembolic events. 24 hour Holter was also done to see if there is any arrhythmia or that. There, it was also negative, sir. Okay. Uh, and post which. Uh, so that is very pertinent. You have to look out for atrial causes. fibrillation. Mm -hmm. Usually it is embolic. Central uh, artery occlusion is embolic. So you have to look for any foci of. Emboli. It can be, most likely it will be from the heart. Yeah. The second possibility is an infective focus, pretty rare. And next, uh, further, uh, they even had to do a workup of vasculitis. Sir. Yeah. And uh, in the workup of vasculitis, it was uh, negative, but uh, they went with a trial dose of uh, steroid, pulse steroids for five days, and then the vision has improved from 4 by 60 to 6 by 60. Oh, oh that is good. Yes. Okay. So the inflammatory parameters were elevated? Within normal level oh, in the okay, first. Okay. So, we are, as a trial we gave, empirically yes. we started. Actually, the serum protein electrophoresis was showing increased intensity in beta 2 band, hmm. which is not significant to any uh, finding, but as it is increased, they have given a trial of uh, okay. pulse steroids. Okay, fine. So, so in this hmm. case of like hmm. CRAO, like uh, from the ER management wise, the uh, ocular massage hmm. has. Yeah. yeah, regarding the management. So, what are the things that you'll do in the year? <laughs> <laughs> the first would be the uh, ideally would be finding the ophthalmic in, uh, examination using the fundoscopy, like basically to find the fundoscopic Cops, changes. Yeah. And otherwise, uh, like uh, the other modality which uh, ER we have is the ultrasound, like to differentiate between the causes on arrival, the painless loss of vision. If uh, there we can identify whether it's a retinal detachment, vitreous hemorrhage yeah. with the help of the So, the vitreous hemorrhage even uh -huh. though we might think that it is uh, something that is related to trauma, yeah. it is obviously related to trauma in a young person. But in a person who is a diabetic, quite often uh, there will be diabetic retinopathy changes, but as long as the posterior pole is not involved, there will be, even though new vessels and other proliferative diabetic retinopathy changes are there, there will not be much symptomatic. So, suddenly it will present as a vascular vitreous hemorrhage and a sudden drop in vision. So, that can be a cause. What is the age of the patient? 58 year 58 old. Year Already old. known case of type 2 yeah. diabetes, hypertension and past history of aneurysmal is there. So, it's already. Yeah. So, so, I think in this patient it is a pertinent history actually. So, it is eminently possible. So, other eye was not showing any evidence of diabetic retinopathy, no? No. Okay. So, I think even in the other eye, there was no evidence of vasculitis, no, no uh, evidence. Yeah. Full vision, 6 by 6. 6 by 6 vision. Mm -hmm. So, uh, with the help of endoscopy, when we have made the, uh, clinched the diagnosis of CRAO, we can go ahead with the first ocular massage. Yeah. So, the idea is to try to displace the embolus. So, uh, if you suddenly reduce the intraocular pressure, 
by either massaging or the other thing that we can do is a paracentesis. Uh -huh. We can just relieve from aqueous from that and it will cause a sudden shift in the intraocular pressure. So, the, we can expect the embolus to move slightly and uh, there can be some displacement. Yes. But usually these treatments uh, will <laughs> not work much. So, the thing is also it, if it has to work, it has to work within the first few hours of it happening. So, when did the patient present? Uh, one day, like one 4 day. pm so, it happened, next yeah, day morning so he presented. Is, so, chances are very less. Yes. Within but 90 minutes sir, if we are present, yeah. we can do it, yeah. PP, like yeah, thrombolysis can be done. Thrombolysis can be done. I think uh, even during my residency time, people have used uh, TPA and all that. Okay. Uh, I think very few anecdotal reports of TPA improving CR, uh, yeah. CRA was there, but generally speaking, it is not even as a treatment guideline because it doesn't work in most cases, 99% of the cases. Other than that, we can uh, give vasodilator medications like nitroglycerin, nitrates or hyperbaric oxygen therapy, mm. carbogen. Okay. Just to increase the mm. <laughs> flow, perfusion, uh, perfusion to increase the perfusion. We can try it and those things. Uh, mm. Next is the irrigation. Yeah. Uh, that's the… Okay, fine. Uh, so, I think CRO is a devastating thing. Quite often, the degree of visual loss is very severe. And uh, all attempts should be made to prevent such a happening uh, occurring in any eye or any other organ. Mm. So, we have to be really on the lookout for uh, all the other pathologies which can probably cause it. So, vasculative workup is mandatory uh, and um, before that I think we have to look for any embolic source. Atrial fibrillation, if it is there, we have to see then uh, carotid Doppler obviously can pick up uh, embolic workup. Okay. Mm. Thanks. That's all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very small class. <laughs>